Hi everyone. So this is the file explorer on my Windows computer, which is connected to the same network as my Zima board. And this here is a network folder that's shared from my Zima board to my local network. Now, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this folder and share it, basically creating your own NAS using the Zima board. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I want to talk about the wiring real quick here. This is my Zima board. This is a thumb drive. Here's my ethernet cable, power cable. Uh, this is a quick kind of a 3D printed case that I made. I'll leave a link to it in the description. If you're interested in this, this is the cable that came in the box with the Zima board. And this is my SSD drive. If you need to connect more than one drive, you're going to need a different cable that allow you to connect up to two drives. This one only allow one. For now, this is going to work for me just fine. However, if you need two drives, you definitely need to buy the other cable. Now, because this, the Casa OS does not support RAID out of the box, there is another software that we're going to use called Duplicati that will kind of do the um, backup for us. So if you need to back up and have two drives, you can still do that. There is a workaround for it. As of right now, I know Casa OS does not support uh, RAID out of the box. We can use TrueNAS, but that's a conversation for a different video. Uh, I want to maintain my Casa OS and I don't want to override that with a TrueNAS because I want to utilize the Zima board for other functions. So with that said, uh, that's the setup I have right now. Let me kind of take you to the computer and talk through the folders, how to add the folder, share it uh, for on your local network, and then how to kind of connect everything and set up the backup. Now I connected the SSD. You can see it sees it here and says found a new drive. So I'm going to click storage manager. And then here we're going to create a storage. We're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it my SSD drive. Now here we're going to choose the SSD that I just connected to the Zima board. And this is just a warning that telling me that the drive will be formatted. And if you have any data, make sure you back it up. We're going to click format and create. And boom, this uh, created the second drive. And you can see here it says my SSD drive. And that's the SSD that I, I just connected to the Zima board. You can see here I can format it again. I can remove it, but it's already connected and working. Okay, so here now I have my uh, SSD. I have the thumb drive also connected. By the way, you can always go to the storage manager, which is here, to manage these and mount the devices or format them if needed. Uh, let me show you how that looks like. Here you can format or remove a drive. That's how you mount. Let's say you've added an SSD, make sure it's formatted and connected here from the storage manager. Now what we're gonna do is, let me go to files. And you see here on my SSD, I'm gonna create a new folder. It's gonna be a shared folder. Let's call it um, files. It's for now for demo purposes. This is going to be shared folder. So check that shared, click submit. Now this files folder lives on the SSD drive that is connected to the Zima board. So any other device like my Windows PC that is connected to the same Wi-Fi can use this folder as like a network drive. So this is that where you store the files. So let's go ahead and pull up this is my uh, Windows PC here, and I'm going to add this files as a network drive. So I'm going to do right click, add network location, and then next, choose that. By the way, you can get the path from here. So if you want to copy path, you can copy that from the files on the Zimmo board. You click this and then do copy path. 
Um, you can also browse. So here, when you do add a network location, uh, you can actually browse and then it'll show you. So let me show you. So if you pass the, the path, uh, let's see. And then we're going to call it, well, this will be Casa OS slash uh, files. And then if you click browse, you'll see here, it show you the folders that were created. And this files folder is the folder that we want to add. So I'm going to select that, click OK. That's the location. Click Next. I'm going to give it a name. We'll, we'll keep it default here. Next. And then this is just to open the folder when I'm done. So now I've added this network folder and I can add stuff to it. Let's say I have a video or I have a, a, a file, a picture, anything. I can definitely add here, which I'll show you in a second. But again, this is a single drive. Um, with NAS, you want RAID. You want to create a duplicate of that drive. And that's why I have the thumb drive here, just to kind of show you how we can create backups. So first, I'm going to do a new folder. I'm going to call it uh, backups. This does not need to be shared. And now we're going to back up this files into the backups. So the way I don't think, or at least I'm not aware that Casa OS support RAID out of the box. So we're going to use this software called Duplicati. Uh, let's go out here and then we're going to go to the app store. Now from the app store, we're going to download the software called Duplicati. So I'm going to click install here. And then while this is finished, uh, once again, if you just want to use the SSD directly and you're, you don't want to make clones or backups, then you're done here. You can just create your, uh, connect your SSD, create your folder, add that as a network uh, drive. So if you add the folder here as a network drive, then you're basically done. And here, let's take a look. This is the folder and you're done here. You can start adding your files. But if you have a driver, um, if you have a drive failure, then you would need kind of a backup. And I know there are some uh, software like a true NAS, but that require you to kind of wipe out the entire board. So I'll talk about true NAS in a minute. I, I pulled it up here and you cannot really have this on top of CAS OS. You would have to kind of wipe out the Zimmer board and then have a true NAS installed on it. Then you would have kind of a true NAS, but I still want to maintain the CAS OS operating system. So we're going to use Duplicati and this is kind of a software that will allow you to make a clone of your folder. So first let's go to settings and I'll show you a couple of things. So the first thing here, you see the uh, PUID and the PGID. This is the user ID. The default is set to a thousand. We have to do set it to a zero. And the reason is we need this application to kind of have a root access. When you do a zero, be careful with the zero, by the way, this means root access for your software, for your application. So that's the first thing we do here. The second thing, we need to introduce the location of the two folders that we are adding. So here, um, let me click Save. And after I'm saving this, let me go to Files. And I'm, I'm going to copy the path. So here, I'm going to go Files. I'm going to copy this path and then go back to Duplicati setting. And then I'm going to add this here. You can see I can add and then we'll add that. And then I'm going to call it my SSD. And then I need, well, let me save this. I need to copy the path from the thumb drive. So I'll go back again here, and then I'm going to copy the path from the backup, and I'm going to do 
copy path, go back to duplicati, and here in the settings, I'm going to add this other path, and I'm going to call this my uh, backup. And the one I called SSD, I think I can call it files. So I think that's better. Let's save it. Now, if I open this, first it's asking me if I want to set up a password. I think I'm fine without a password. I'm the only one who's using this. If you do want to set a password, you can always do that. So for now, I'm just going to do no, my machine has a single account. If you always want to come back and set up a password, you can go to settings and set up the password later here. Now let's go and add a backup and then configure a new backup. Next, I'm going to call it uh, backup one. And um, here, if you want to some encryption, here's some description. I'm just going to do backup. And then I'm going to do no encryption for now. Um, so for me, I'm storing my YouTube videos on this. They're kind of public videos anyway, so nothing secret about them. I don't need really password and encryption and all that. If you do, you can always set that up. Now we are choosing the destination. The destination will be the thumb drive here. So I called it backup. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay, so this is backups. This is the the backup. This is my, so the destination will be backup. This is what I called my thumb drive. Now, I don't need the username and password because this is all done locally on the same PC, so I don't have to uh, authenticate or anything. Now, I'm going to do test connection here, and it says connection worked. It means the thumb drive is connected and everything looks good. I'm going to click next, and then here, we need to go to computer and then look for files. I'm going to check this files and this is the source. So the source of the backup will be the SSD files folder. Now we're going to click next. And then here it's asking me when to run the backup and I can schedule it to run, let's say on daily basis. Um, it's giving me the default setting to start at 1 p.m. Uh, starting tomorrow and then runs once a day. Okay, perfect. I'll just accept the default settings for now. Click next. And then this is just to truncate or to have the backup in like small files. So I'm just going to accept the default here. And then this is the retention. I'm going to do like delete backup that are older than maybe one, I don't know, month. So every month, anything that's older than a month, it'll automatically be deleted. Uh, you can, you can do weeks, you can do days, uh, however you like to configure this. I'm going to click save. Now this is my, uh, backup that I just set on Duplicati. I'm going to run it now. Now, I don't have anything to back up as of now, but I'm going to just run it and just see. Now we're going to go look at these folders and you can see in my backup, there is kind of a three backups already because I ran it, even though there was nothing here in the files to start with. Now I'm going to add a file. So I'll show you how can I, uh, I'm going to go here. And if I go to my downloads, you can see I'm going to copy this video. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go to my network. I'm going to add this file. And now I've added the file. So if I go back here and refresh, I should see the file I just added. And here it is. This is the file that I just added here, which is the video. Now, if I run the backup, then this will get also backed up into my um, backup folder here. Now, keep in mind, these are kind of like a zip folder, so you're not going to see the file exactly. You would have to restore the backup to see it. But let's go back to Duplicati, run it one more time. 
And then if I go back to files and then go back to my backups, you see I have more, more folders here. Now, again, they're not going to be like the exact files here. They're more like uh, encrypted or like zip folders. So if you need to restore the files, you would have to run a restore. So you go to restore and then direct restore from the backup file, restore from configuration, or you restore from backup one. So that's how you can do a restore. Let's try it. What if we go to the original folder? I'm going to delete now this file, which is the video that I added, right? Now I've deleted it, nothing in here. What if I restore from this backup? Let's click next and restore file looks good here. I'm going to check this box, click continue, uh, original location. Yeah, everything, I'm going to accept the default here. It says I'm restoring to the original location. I'm going to click restore. Let's see what happens. It says successfully restored. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to click my files. And here's my file again. So it's been restored for me. And you can see this is kind of uh, a workaround for not having RAID uh from within Casa OS. Um, once again, like I mentioned, you can always use true NAS to kind of override, to get an image, override this on the Zima board and then use a true, true NAS to actually have RAID and everything. I do want to keep my Casa OS uh, operating system because I'm using this for more than just a NAS. I want to have like my own VPN. I have my home assistant, which I made another video about. So there are other things that on Casa OS that I need. So that's the reason I'm not installing TrueNAS directly on the Zima board. If you're interested in that, leave me a comment and we can probably test out TrueNAS on uh, the Lead Potato or a Raspberry Pi or something else. I'll make a future video about it if you're interested. But that's, that's like why I'm not using TrueNAS. And this is kind of a workaround that will work for me. Uh, what I really want this for is to have my uh, videos for like YouTube videos, backups, things like that. And again, I'm not really worried about encryption or password or anything. They're gonna be public YouTube videos anyway. So I hope this was helpful. I, I hope this is kind of help you to build your own NAS and continue to also utilize the Zimmer board for other features other than just like NAS and uh, maybe maybe a VPN, maybe uh, a home assistant, and there are so many other application. So that's the reason. And this is kind of an easy and simple way to have uh, a way to kind of store your files uh, without on your just like without on your local network without having to go through a lot of hassle and a lot of work. It's usually simple and easy to set up. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching. Uh, this is it for today's video. I will see you in the next one.